Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, my name is Evelyn Huynh. I'm the Partner Relations Manager. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I have my colleague with me. Hi. <laughs> my name is Shannon. I am the Volunteer Coordinator here. Excited to be here. We have so much information for you. So let's dive in and get started. Um, so first things first, uh, we are recording this session. So if you have to drop off early or if you signed up and couldn't make it, welcome to the replay. I hope you enjoy the show. Um, but uh, we've got a lot to go over, um, a bunch of specifics for the Drive Leader program itself. And then Shannon is going to come and uh, rejoin us to cover some volunteering fun information. So um, so yeah, so Shannon will, will hop off and for a little bit and then come back to join us. Uh, what we're going to cover today, we do have a lot. Um, we're going to, I'm going to give you an overview about Family Giving Tree, about the back to school drive, and then we'll touch on some specifics about our, the physical donation drive, and then go into, uh, the online drive for those of you who are running our online version of the drive. That's when Shannon will then afterwards come back in and talk about volunteering, and then we'll go over the timeline and then give you plenty of room at the end for you to ask your questions. So, because we are going to cover lots and lots of information, um, I would love it if you all, as you're, as we're kind of going through the pieces of information, kind of save your questions. And if it gets answered, great. And if it doesn't, pop them into the chat at the end and we can get them answered. But if you got something burning, that's totally fine. Throw it in there and we'll try to address it as we go. Okay, so first things first, let's give you an overview. For those of you who are not familiar with Family Giving Tree, we are an organization that has been around for 34 years. We're 34 years old. Um, it's a very, very exciting thing to be in the Bay Area and be a staple in the nonprofit world for this long. Uh, our main staples uh, of what we do. We do a back to school drive and a holiday wish drive each year, but we do work year round in order to get those things set up. So we are a year round organization. These are just the two times a year during the summer and during the winter when we come out and reach out to you all to help us out. So this is actually our 29th back to school drive. Um, we originally started as an organization that focused on um, providing holiday gifts to those in need. Uh, we are a staff of 20 people or less at any given time, and our main office is in Milpitas. We're at the Cerrado Center in Milpitas at the moment, and uh, during drive season, so during the July and August and during November, December, uh, we are actually in full for force working physical doing all the physical labor to get all of the donations out the door um, to our agencies and schools. And that's when we're working out of a donated South Bay warehouse. So we don't have our own space. Um, it's it's wherever we can get the donated space large enough for, for us to be able to run our operations. And um, for the past few years, we've been in Sunnyvale. Um, we most likely will be in Sunnyvale again. Uh, this is where for anyone who drops off or, you know, stops in to volunteer, um, anything like that, it's that location. So if we're ever talking about the warehouse, that's what it is. We also work with uh, community partners to provide single day remote locations for our drive leaders to drop off as well. So we are partnering with Arriba Juntos in San Francisco in the Mission District this year. Also um, Stanford Research Park at the Hub the community hub in Palo Alto for um, our peninsula folks and Three Crosses Church in Castor Valley. And those are, there are separate single day location with some specific hours um, for our folks to be able to sign up for appointments and drop off in those locations. Uh, again, for those who are not familiar with Family Giving Tree, our mission is to connect those who can give to those in need with educational support, gifts and volunteerism. Our vision is that we envision a world where giving brings joy, offers hope, and creates learning possibilities. And that's where you come in. Um, as drive leaders, you are here to help us bring all of that to fruition, especially the learning possibilities for back to school season and the joy in connecting our communities. This season, our goal is to get to 30,000 students supported across the Northern California Bay Area region. We will be working across 11 counties uh, to 
partnering with schools and agencies to make sure that their students who are in need of backpacks and school supplies get them in hand. In order to do that, we're going to need about 350 or so drive leaders to work with us and get this done. So right now, it's looking like we need a, like a little over 200 more people to sign up. So this is your opportunity to really flex those those influencer muscles if you got them. And even if you don't, you, you don't think you do, you do. Um, if you're with a community group and uh, you know, you're signed up and you maybe work for a corporation that has never heard of us, it's an opportunity to kind of share the word, right? Um, if you're part of a rotary club outside of your corporate, uh, that corporation that you're representing or something, or maybe you're part of a PTA group, if your partner has a company or an organization they're associated with that hasn't worked with us yet, it's a chance for you to be a family giving tree ambassador and we would love your help to help to connect us with the rest of the community in order to expand that community impact because we really really need it in order to get 30,000 students um, starting their school year nice and fresh with these fresh new backpacks and supplies um, so yeah so be an FGT ambassador we would love for you to join that team uh, our badge for this year, we've got Better Together. It's all about connecting and being part of a community, right? So go in with that spirit in mind. Um, our tagline is together, everyone achieves more. So just kind of keep that in your heart as you're moving forward in the back to school season. Uh, the overview of the different ways you can lead a drive. So some of you may already be familiar with all of those different ways you can um, be a drive leader with us. Uh, but for those of you who are maybe just like you decided to sign up and you wanted to know more about what you could do, um, you could lead a physical drive. So that means you uh, would return physical backpacks and supplies to Family Giving Tree at the end of the drive season, which is the end of July. Uh, you could run an online drive with us, which is to help fundraise online, either through your workplace giving platforms, through your corporation, um, or funding backpacks and supplies on the virtual giving tree, which is a customizable website that we offer to you. And I will be covering off on all of that information. But more importantly, it doesn't have to be just one or the other. You can do both. Um, I highly encourage folks who have the capacity to do it to sign up for both. This really helps to maximize the accessibility that you provide for your group, for people who maybe don't want to have to stop in a store and pick up supplies and would rather just give and provide the support that way. Um, promoting an online drive, running your virtual giving tree, like that's the way to go for them because they never have to leave their desk. There, nothing gets shipped to them. It's easy peasy. Um, but, you know, for folks who maybe want to be able to take their kids out to go shopping or they themselves who enjoy picking out fun pencils and markers and things right here. I enjoy that um, to be able to have that opportunity and go out and, and pick out, you know, and customize their backpack that they put together. It's a fun experience and you want to be able to give that opportunity for everybody. Uh, so first, let's dive into physical donations. Um, these, again, are the donations of supplies and backpacks that will come to us either at one of our remote locations or at our warehouse um, in the South Bay. And if you are running a physical donation, you signed up for, for uh, tags to be sent to you, like materials to be sent to you, these are the things that you're going to expect to get. So on the very left, you've got the three different grade level backpack tags. And these are to support our uh, kindergarten through second grade, which is um, our little acorn there, the blue tag, and then our orange one, which is the sapling, our third through fifth grade. And then finally, Oakley, the Oakley with our sixth through 12th graders. And these are all different. They have different things that go into each backpack. So we customize that shopping list for you based off of what schools um, have asked for as far as what is relevant to their students, um, things that they actually need in their backpacks. And so, um, yeah, so you would you would be receiving a pack of those or however many it is that you requested. We also have um, drive leader instructions that would be included as well and uh, a guide for 
backpacks in terms of what is appropriate for which grade level, because some people, maybe you've never had to shop for a backpack for a kindergartner or anyone, and you don't really know what they would like. Well, this backpack guidelines document is going to help you with that. And it walks you through and it helps your donors with it too. It kind of gives them some guidance about what's cool for those kids that age. Um, because, you know, a 12th grader may not want to carry around a princess backpack. So just some food for thought. Um, if you requested for it, which uh, we did ask for during registration, um, we will uh, supply you with monetary donation envelopes. If you have folks who want to um, donate any checks or cash that you can collect, if you're going to get those those monetary donation envelopes, you're also going to get a nifty manila envelope to house all of that in where you can put your organization name on it and stick all of that th those monetary donations into and drop it off to us when you drop off your backpacks um, and your supplies. If you requested for any posters, we have posters available as well. So you can um, put them up in your uh, lobbies or your cafeteria spaces or wherever to let people know you're doing something cool this summer and this is how they can participate. Um, so this is all that you can expect to receive. If you registered and you didn't ask for any of these things, but you feel like, ah, actually, I think I do want this go ahead and send an email reply to your registration confirmation that you got, um, or you can send an email directly uh, to us. Um, emails will be at the end and I can show you that it's drivleadersfgt.org and we can update your registration to make sure you receive all of that good stuff. In addition to all of these physical materials, um, for those of you who requested for online materials, you can download pretty much almost all of that from our drive leader uh, our Drive Leader Hub. So this is our website for all of the resources that are made available to you in a digital format. Very handy. It's also linked in your confirmation email so you can find it there. If you go to our homepage at fgt.org, there's a big fat link right on the top left. So you can just go there and find the Drive Leader Hub. And we're con consistently updating that page with more resources as we crank them out. And so we've we've got most of everything out there right now. I think the posters are one thing that still need to get updated and put out there. But um, if you need something and it's maybe not on this site, reach out to us and let us know. We can see what we can do to offer it to you because we want to make this as as seamless and easy as possible for you as a drive leader to um, partner with us and, and get those donations in. Uh, as far as physical donations go, we one of the resources available to download is our supply list. So if you want to opt not to use tags or um, request for any, you can download and send out the supply list to your group and say, hey, all of these grade levels, these are the items that are needed in the backpacks. And so um, it's all in one place. It's easy for them to reference. This might be handy for something, say, if you're hosting a drive um, using like a one day event or something, you can email it out ahead of time and um, folks can come to the event and drop these things off uh, when they when they attend. So a few things to note for those of you who are returning um, from last year's back to school drive, we have made some quantity updates uh, to some of the items. We also have made some quality updates to the items as well. So one of the first things you'll see on each one of those lists is that we're asking for padded backpacks. We did receive a lot of backpacks that were a little too thin to distribute to students and uh, some that were actually way too small. They didn't fit all of the things that needed to go in. And so we have uh, specific minimum height size requirements for each of those backpacks. And the minimum requirement for the smallest one is 15 inches. And that's pretty standard to be able to kind of fit notebooks and, and folders and things into. So um, hopefully that is uh, something your folks will be able to kind of pay attention to and adhere to. We do want to be able to offer these students quality um, and not just quantity. Quantity is very important, but they also have to last long enough for them for the whole school year, right? Um, some other new things that we have brought on is um, a, a bunch of new items too that the schools have shared feedback that they actually could use, the students could actually use. So BPA-free water bottle, um, toothpaste and floss. We do offer, we have been putting in toothbrushes into the backpacks. And so this just kind of hefts up that sort of help piece of it um, to make it a sort of a full, well-rounded backpack for the student um, to start their new year. Uh, again, 
please definitely check the backpack guidelines and share that out with your group if you have the opportunity. Um, these are really important for the different grades uh, because the older kids tend to carry around a lot more. Um, there is a higher sort of size requirement for the six to 12th grade backpacks. As you get like higher in the grade levels, they, they grow by like an inch or so. So um, pay attention to that and help to kind of share that out there. Um, as far as collection boxes go, we do offer co branded collection boxes that you can request for. If you didn't already and you want them, um, you certainly can. Again, just reach out, let us know that you need collection boxes. You do wanna note that they are pickup only. We cannot send those out because they are too big. Um, they are 22 by 22 by 39 and a half, if that gives you some context. So um, they do come folded flat, I fit about like six boxes uh, folded flat on in the back of my Prius, um, if that helps you. <laughs> I have had to uh, take them around town here and there, and so I've tested it. I can fit, I can fit more than six, but six is a comfortable number for me. Um, they do cost us $38 a box to print. So if you don't think you need them or you feel like, uh, I've got another way to collect, uh, definitely consider that. But if you want our branded collection boxes, because they are pretty and they do help draw attention to your drive, uh, consider making a donation to cover that cost. That information on how to provide that donation is available in your registration confirmation email. You can do it online. When you come pick up your box, if you want to drop off a donation for those boxes at that time, I will certainly take your money. I'm not going to turn that away. So just something to think, of, to think about. Uh, all of the materials that are going to be uh, distributed to you for your drive for you to be able to kick it off. That's all happening starting the week of June 3rd. In your confirmation email, there is a link for you to sign up for a sign up genius appointment to come pick up your stuff if you do want to pick it up. And if, again, if you're getting collection boxes, you're going to have to pick it up. So I'm going to hang on to your packets so you pick them up alongside your boxes at that time. Um, if you're not going to take collection boxes and you don't want to come by our Milpitas office to pick that stuff up, that's totally fine. Um, we're going to start mailing that week too. So starting that week, not everything's going to go out on June 3rd. It's going to take us some time because there's going to be a lot of you all. And we want to make sure that all of your packets are as complete and correct as possible. So you can kick off your drive seamlessly. Like I said, look for the sign up genius link in your confirmation email. If you need to make an appointment for your packet and or your collection box. Um, it's really also a great opportunity to come in, in person if you want to come pick up your stuff um, to gather some additional materials. So say you didn't register for something like a poster, but then you get there and you're like, wow, it looks really cool in real life. Well, there's your opportunity to grab some from us. We'll be happy to distribute them to you there. So uh, something for you to uh, look forward to. And you get to see us in person and say hi. And that's always nice, right? Um, any... Uh, any materials pickups are going to happen 606 Valley Way in Milpitas. That is our office. We are not there every day. We are a remote working group. Um, and if you come and drop in not during an appointment time, there is a good chance that you may not run into anyone there um, because most of us are working from home. And uh, so, yeah, so it's very, very important for you to sign up for that for that appointment or email email us and let us know that you, you want to uh, come in at a specific time. Anyone who's going to be receiving your items via mail, we do send out all of the materials via USPS Priority. If you provided us with an account number for your FedEx, um, meaning you're willing to donate the cost of sending the materials out, thank you. We so appreciate that because it helps us. Um, we'll send it out via FedEx. If you didn't give us an account number, but you do have one and you want to donate that and share it with us um, for, for just the purposes of sending your materials out to you, please feel free to do that. You can reach out to us and give, give us your account number and we can add it to your registration. Um, and so when it comes time to mailing, we can note that and um, that helps us go a long way too. So mailing is not cheap these days. I don't know if you've all experienced this, but yeah. Um, also, I didn't mention this in the beginning, but if you wanted to introduce yourself um, or you had any sort of outstanding comments or questions or commentary because you've run a drive before and you totally agree with it, feel free to use the webinar chat. It is there for you. And I want to make sure that um, all of your comments and questions are addressed. 
Physical donations, a couple of pro tips for you if you haven't run one before. Um, the, the tag images are all provided on the Drive Leader Hub. The supply lists are on the Drive Leader Hub. Share those things out as much as you can, um, whether it be on your social media, through your intranet with work, um, feel free to do that. And you also wanna, if you get the tags, you wanna be able to place those tags in a well-trafficked area. So um, front lobbies are a great place to start if you've got them. And that's also a great place for that collection box. So you can kind of, you know, attach those tags maybe alongside the box or something or um, have them on your front desk, um, but make them prominent for people to be able to see. Uh, if you've requested for posters, make sure you get your posters up and, and out in front of people. Fill out those little fields that are on the poster so they know exactly when they need to get donations back to you and where they got to go. And if they have questions who to contact, um, that would be really, really important and helpful. Like I said, collection boxes, make sure they're out in trafficked areas. They are really like bright and fun and pretty looking. So they do attract attention and they'll get people to think like, oh, what are we doing here? Um, so it's a great opportunity to have a, a conversation starter with a collection box. Um, so something to, to think about with that. Uh, throughout the next several months, um, there, there are going to be back to school material drive deals. Um, people put supplies on sale and it would be really great for your team or your group to take advantage of those deals so they can maybe pick up more, right? So we not only take supp supply filled backpacks, we will also take extra supplies. So if they are filling one backpack, but they are getting a massive deal on maybe a three pack of pencils, we will take those extra two packs of pencils. So just have them bring it. Um, but share those discounts out with people to help them kind of get the biggest bang for their buck. If you are putting your donation boxes in a public area where people kind of walking by can see, at the end of the day, make sure you're securely storing those donations. We don't want you to be um, subject to any sort of break-ins or anything if something looks like it is uh, worth kind of breaking a window and taking. Um, so pull them behind your desk, put them in a closet or something at the end of the day. Um, just make sure that you're, you're just kind of keeping a lookout for that type of stuff. And if you are maybe working in a hybrid or a completely remote environment and you don't have a place for a drop off a collection box or anything like that, um, consider scheduling a meetup, you know? Um, we've had drive leaders who have met up in the parking lot of like a Starbucks to transfer donations from one trunk to the other. I recently just did that like last week with somebody and we were in a Target parking lot. It was very efficient, um, but it's a thing and it's totally fine to do. And it's kind of like a good way, good excuse to kind of see somebody and catch up in person. Uh, and again, it's this is a team effort. It's all about connecting with our community. So you don't feel like you have to do any of this alone. Consider teaming up with other people. We do have some drive leaders who will bring on a team of like three people to work on this stuff together. And it's really, really great. Um, so it is an opportunity to really connect with other people and do something good together. I do have a question in the chat. Um, if we get extra supplies, but they don't fill all of the requirements of the bag, are we still able to donate them? Yes, absolutely. One of the things that we do in the warehouse and why we have it is to make sure that we are quality checking every single backpack to ensure that everything that is supposed to be in the bag is actually in there before it goes out to the schools. So if you're if you couldn't find flashcards or something, for example, um, that's absolutely fine. We 100% will accept that, and uh, we will help fill it. Any any backpack tags that you take and maybe aren't able to get filled, um, don't worry about it. Just bring those leftover tags back to us, and we can repurpose them in the warehouse. Um, it's better to have more tags than you need because you never know when there's somebody who might want to just take like multiple tags per person. So uh, don't be shy about asking for more than you need. We want to be able to provide you with what, anything you need um, plus some. As far as drop-offs go, uh, similar to picking up your materials, they are by appointment. And I will be sending an email out to all of the drive leaders as we get closer to July about signing up for an appointment and they will be appointments for either those one day remote locations in San Francisco, Castro Valley or Palo Alto and the Sunnyvale warehouse, which we will be uh, hosting like official drop off days for three days of that 
the end of July. Uh, I think it's like the week before the last, the week before the last week of July. So um, more information to come. Rest assured, we will be communicating with you, but you do need to sign up for an appointment before you come and drop your stuff off. Make sure you're counting all of your backpacks, um, supply filled backpacks and empty backpacks. There is a drop off form that you'll be able to fill out and uh, we will want you to um, send us your totals before you come so we can get an idea of what to expect. Uh, you know, if you're going to come and drop off 500 filled backpacks, we, we want to make sure we have the volunteers at the ready to receive them. So um, it helps us with planning. Um, and, and we would really appreciate the heads up on all of that. So, so definitely remember to send your totals and I will remind you as well uh, to to the point of being able to plan ahead, please show up to your appointment. <laughs> if you cannot show up to your appointment, something comes up, uh, send us an email, give us a call so you can reschedule the time. Because again, it takes a lot for us to be able to make sure we can plan to receive you. Um, we are a very small operation. So we do wanna make sure that the resources are available at our warehouse to, um, to, to take in 500 backpacks. If you all can get 500 backpacks each in, I would love you forever. <laughs> make it happen. I know you can make it happen. Um, get creative. Anyway, um, use your box for collection only. Don't try to house and haul all of your backpacks in those collection boxes, especially if they're all filled. They get really, really heavy and I'd be worried about your, your box maybe bottoming out and um, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of hairy. It's also a little hard to carry um, from one place to another. And I certainly, I cannot fill a, 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 put a filled collection box in the back of my car. Um, so yeah, so just kind of keep that in mind that you, you'll you want to transfer the stuff out of there into your car. It could go into maybe some bags. I do that. I, I get like large um, garbage bags, utility bags, and fill them up with all of the donations to just make the transferring a little bit easier. And again, don't do it alone. Recruit help. If you got buddies, coworkers who have giant SUVs or trucks and you drive like, you know, a little Miata, that is something to think about. <laughs> Start making those friends now. Um, one thing to also note is, is aside from our official drop-off week, we are going to have one day for early drop-off and that's going to be in the South Bay, um, most likely in Sunnyvale on July 17th. So when we send out those appointment um, signups, you're going to see spots for July 17th to be able to stop in uh, and drop off at that time. And that's mostly for those folks who are so ahead of the game and really just have to get these things out of their house or their place of work to make room because they can get, you know, things get full, closets will get full. So we will happily take that stuff from you earlier. So July 17th is your early drop off day, should you want to take advantage of it. For those of you who are running online donations, again, um, this is contactless giving. You never have to see me in person if you don't want to. Um, that would make me a little sad, but, you know, that's okay. We completely support the online giving because it is just as powerful as being able to bring in a supply-filled backpack. And that is it presents itself in multiple ways. Uh, if you are part of a corporation, there may be um, workplace giving uh, platforms that you are already integrated with, like Your Cause, Bright Funds, or Benevity. I think Benevity is probably one of the biggest ones that we typically see. Um, and you, you've registered for your drive, but you certainly don't need to use our own VGT, which is front and center, uh, in order to raise funds for it. If Benevity is easier for you. If any one of these other workplace giving platforms is easier for you to engage your folks with, use it. Take the path of least resistance for your folks. And if you do, if your company does donation matching, those platforms also help with donation matching as well. And uh, um, it would be a really great thing to also remind your folks that donation matching is a thing. So if they submit the donations through the online platforms to also consider submitting their matches. But these are all the different ways you can engage with us online as a drive leader to continue driving that message out there. If you are running a virtual giving tree with us um, and you signed up before this morning, you should have already received your welcome email that walks you through exactly what you need to do in order to set it up and get it sent out. 
in that email, we do reference a tutorial video. And this is a fresh video that walks you through how to set up your VGT and customize it and what you should expect um, as an admin of your virtual giving tree. So give it a watch. It's a short five minute video and it's loaded with lots of helpful information. And I made it. So, you know, just help me help a girl out. <laughs> Um, on the virtual giving tree, to kind of give you a quick snapshot, the customizable areas are um, you can upload your own logo or a customized picture or whatever you want for yourself to personalize your virtual giving tree. You also have an opportunity to share your own personalized message. We have default messaging on the site, but if you want to zhuzh it up a little bit and make it fancy and cool, do that. Absolutely do that. And we support that. And um, we also have an area for you to be able to input goals if you want to be able to share a benchmark goal for your group to hit in terms of how many donations you want to get in. And that could be in the form of monetary goal um, or in the form of like the student supported goal as well. So uh, a couple of pro tips, like I just said, set your goals. It gives people something to work towards. Um, share your progress. It's really helpful for folks to know how you're doing. And especially if you feel like, oh, you set up an ambitious goal and you need people to up their game. If you tell them like, hey, we are like two donations shy of meeting our goal, people are going to step up and, and do that. So so definitely don't be shy about messaging that out to, to folks. Um, so definitely check your stats and update your goals as you see fit. If say you set a goal and you blew it out of the water in the first few days, Go back in there and edit it and, you know, give yourself more of a stretch goal for yourself. Um, just something to note for you, if you are running a virtual giving tree, it can take up to an hour for the donations that are freshly made to reflect in the system. We are, it, it's really dependent on the payment processing. So if the credit card company takes a little bit longer to actually process that donation, that's how long it takes. Um, so we only we only register the donation on the front page of your site and in your reports once the donation has successfully processed through the credit card company. So if for whatever reason, somebody's card got declined or whatever, it won't reflect on your, your platform. So, but that usually will take an hour or less to kind of set that expectation. Um, ignite your teams to partake in some friendly competition if competition is what drives you. You know, we talk about the spirit of togetherness and coming together as a community, but really if they want to go head to head, don't stop them. Um, set it up so that you could have, you know, your different executive teams compete against each other. That's always a fun thing to watch unfold, right? Um, if not, you know, if you don't, if your your folks aren't so competitive, that's totally fine. Regardless of how it is you decide to pursue it, be open to sharing the stories and the images that we provide for you in our Drive Leader Hub and that we will be sending out in e emails and newsletters to you um, to help share the story of why it is so important that backpacks get out to these students in the Bay Area, um, especially where we are today in the economy. Um, I feel like most of us kind of feel that and uh, it really extends and is exponentially more felt more um, in the communities that are in need of these supplies and these backpacks, the, the financial support. Um, it's all incredibly important and it really does bring us together as a group, as a community, and um, people need to be able to hear about it and hear about why, right? Um, and definitely connect often with them. Don't be shy about reaching out to folks and making making the asks out there. Um, the worst they do is ignore you and you're no worse off than you were when you started, right? So, so yeah, together, everyone achieves more. So let's think about that as we move forward in the spirit of back to school giving this season. Again, uh, the Drive Leader Hub is a fantastic resource, especially if you're running an online drive. We have uh, online specific collateral for you to be able to download and share. We have posters that are just for online donors or for virtual giving tree donors um, that don't have like a drop off date kind of whatever field for you to have to worry about. So if you're only running an online drive, you can use those to help market your, your message. Um, we also have social graphics if you want to post on your social media page. Um, so yeah, definitely use it. Uh, as far as communicating with folks, um, 
We provide you with uh, an email template in the Drive Leader Hub. You are welcome to dive into that and use that as a guide um, for your communication schedule. It includes timing or email templates for timing, such as like when you launch your campaign, what things look like during the first week, checking in midway through when you're getting towards the end of your campaign and then after your campaign has ended. Um, we put the words together for you to save you the effort. Um, obviously, you can change up whatever you want. You don't have to use it. But um, this general guide of you know this particular communication schedule is really helpful to make sure that you are staying connected with your group as it pertains to your community impact activity, activity that you're taking part in with us. Um, the virtual giving tree, we have worked really, really hard on it. And we do have a team of three people who are on the support team ready to help answer your questions and troubleshoot with you. So if you have questions, um, please email vgtteam at familygivingtree.org. This is referenced in your welcome email if you signed up for a virtual giving tree. Um, let me check really quickly. There are some questions here. We have two San Jose locations and would like one location to be virtual only and the other location to be hybrid. Is that possible on the web portal? 100% absolutely. Yes, you can do the virtual giving tree across your entire group and then just have your single location that you want to also host a, a collection box um, and maybe like a, maybe the signage for a virtual giving tree um, access as well. So if you want if you want like a customized like eight and a half by 11 sign that you can you can download and print, I can create that for you. Just reach out and let me know that you want a customized VGT sign and I'll help I'll hook you up. Um, so reach out. Um, but yes, hybrid in different locations, however you want to run it, definitely can accommodate it. Um, do you need volunteers to sort and pack the backpacks? Uh, Shannon will be covering the volunteer activity, so I'm going to save that for her later, but short answer is yes. Um, so yeah, so the virtual giving tree support team, we are here for you. There are three of us. I'm the one in the middle with pigtails. <laughs> I got to pick, I got to put this graphic together, so I got to pick who, who got to represent me. So does it look like me? I don't have pigtails, but... <laughs> Um, we try to make it fun and light and we just want to make sure, you know, that we are an inviting bunch of people and we're happy to help you. And so don't feel shy about reaching out to us. Okay, so now perfect time to answer that question about volunteering. We've got Shannon to talk about volunteering as a drive leader. So take it away. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, that was perfect timing. That question is great. We absolutely need volunteers to help sort and pack backpacks in our warehouse. This year, we're looking for um, around a thousand volunteers. So let's get into it. Drive leaders get special perks. So we, within those thousand volunteers, about 750 of them, of those spots are going to go to drive leaders. So you get early access, early priority access, and you get more spots than a general community member would. Um, general community gets five total slots and you as a drive leader get 10. So every drive leader gets access to those spots on May 29th at noon. So put it in your calendar. Um, it can get a little competitive. So just, yeah. I definitely suggest putting it on your calendar. Um, I will go into some um, on the next slide a little later. Um, I'll go into the fact that some drive leaders get a little special push, a um, little special access, um, and you'll figure out, you'll learn what kind of um, groups those are. But some information about those warehouse shifts we have shifts Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So there are two-hour shifts that start at 10, 12.30, and 3. And they're available between July... Um, Sorry, I, I changed... Okay, July 8th <laughs> and August 14th. Um, so there's a month and a half there where we have some leeway in um, what you're going to be doing and um, when you might be available. So 
One thing to note, volunteers of all ages are welcome. We get volunteers who are six months old, um, who might just be holding <laughs> some things for photos, or we get volunteers who are retired um, and looking for something to do. Anyone under 16 will need adult supervision. So if volunteer groups are coming, like school groups, um, they, we need, we require one adult for every three children. Um, and if you are, if the kids are between 10 and 16, we have a, a larger ratio. So one for every five teens or tweens. Um, so that just makes sure that we are, <laughs> we're not childcare um, and that if we get to give as much attention to every single volunteer as we can. Um, these, if you want to get involved right now, we need your help preparing the drive materials and the collateral that Evelyn already talked about. So those, um, the backpack tags, those need to be punched out. The, we have um, drive leader packets so you'll order tags and posters and stuff like that. And we get volunteers to um, put that all together for a drive leader and then mail it out. So if you want to get involved now, email me. Um, it'll be later, but it's, I'll say it now, it's volunteers at fgt.org, um, as well as any questions that you might have. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, all right, next um, slide. To be fair, um, if you are a new drive leader or if you have um, volunteered with us for a long time in the past, just maybe you want to listen up a little bit. Um, we are changing a couple of things. We tried this out last year and it worked really well. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of it this year as well. Um, when you register a group, you need to enter your group member's information two weeks before your shift time. Um, that really makes sure that your volunteers are going to be there. We have, unfortunately, we have a kind of a high rate of no-shows where people will sign up and we think that they're coming, but um, things happen or you reserve 10 spots and you only get five volunteers. We just want to make sure that all of the volunteer spots that we have that are open, that are reserved, are people who are coming. So we need that information two weeks in advance. And if it's not in there, then it'll be automatically released back to the priority registration site. You'll get multiple emails from us to, um, as reminders to say you need to get it in before this date. Please get it in before. Um, if it's released, then that's also great news for drive leaders who might not get spots the first round when everything opens at the end of May. You can keep looking back on the site and there might be some open spaces for you. So that's a great perk. <laughs> um, like I mentioned earlier, some drive leaders get special, extra special early access. <laughs> um, and those drive leaders are ones who have high attendance rates from last year. So you signed up for 10 spots and you got 10 people to come and volunteer. We really wanna reward that great behavior. Um, also returning drive leaders who have been unable to sign up for shifts in the past two years. Like I said, it is um, a bit competitive um, and spots go quickly. So we wanna make sure that even if you haven't been able to volunteer in the past two years, you have a better chance of doing it this year. Um, as well as new drive leaders, you we want you to try everything. <laughs> so you can volunteer with us and hopefully you'll get some good spots. Lastly, we have a volunteer guide coming out soon. So that includes registration and ins instructions and the FAQs, also volunteer do's and don'ts, don't wear Tevas, do wear closed-toed shoes, do bring a water bottle, don't bring a bottle of wine, um, stuff like that. 
And then it'll also include warehouse volunteer job descriptions, what you might be doing, as well as if you're interested, a workflow chart. So backpacks go from here to here, and this is how we do it, stuff like that. And that's it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Shannon. Mm -hmm. And if you do have any questions about volunteering whatsoever, um, her email is in the chat. So copy and paste that thing and keep it handy. So um, up next, let's talk about timeline. When does what happen? We keep talking about these wonderful things that you have to look forward to, but what does that look like on a calendar? Well, uh, Here's what it is in a, in a snapshot. So right now the virtual giving trees are live. If you registered and you didn't sign up for a virtual giving tree, but you do want one, email me, let us know, and we can get you set up. And it takes about one to two business days and a welcome email would get pushed out to you by then. And then you can go ahead and go to town. Once you get that welcome email, it is live and ready to go. You can customize it or not um, up to you, but take advantage of it. Uh, May 29th, is when those priority warehouse volunteer registration um, slots open up. As she said, we get up to 10 slots each. Yay, that's exciting. Um, week of June 3rd, again, that is when all of those physical materials are going to be ready to go. So you can come and pick those up by appointment um, or we, we we start getting that out in the mail to you. If you get to a point where you, maybe you've blown through 25 tags in a day and you need more, send us an email and we can get more out to you. Either you know you can stop by our office, and, you know, schedule an appointment, stop by, pick it up, or um, we can mail it out to you. Just, just reach out and let us know. We can get additional materials out to you not a problem and not a bad thing to have happen. So I love that. So I look forward to many, many more emails saying, I need more tags, Evelyn. Um, July 8th through August 14th, that is when the warehouse is officially going to be open up for volunteering. So all of that in-person fun happens between um, that time period. July 17th is, again, when all of those early physical donations are going to be, uh, we're going to be available to collect those from you at the warehouse. Um, otherwise, if you are going to follow the standard timeline for drop-offs, um, our drop-off days are going to be from July 23rd to July 25th. Um, our schools begin picking up that same week. So for context, this is why we are asking for donations to come back um, and asking for people who are able to drop off early to drop off early because we would like to be able to prep for those schools who are picking up to be able to receive your backpacks. That would be fabulous. And then September 5th um, at 9 p.m. is going to be when the virtual giving tree closes. So you will have until 9 p.m. Pacific time on September 5th for all of your group members to be able to donate through the virtual giving tree. Any questions at any time, email us. If they are our drive leader specific questions, hit up driveleaders at fgt.org. If you've got volunteer specific questions, hit up volunteers at fgt.org. Um, I, for now, am on the other end of the drug leader's email, and um, Shannon is on the other end of the volunteer's email, just so you know, these are the faces that are going to be associated to those responses. So um, does anyone have any questions? Um, if you do, please go ahead and throw it into the chat at this time. I will give you a minute. Was this helpful for you? Is it all the, is it, was it boring? Was it fun? I want to hear your feedback. Oh, I'm getting a reaction. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you're very welcome, Joanna. Thank you so much. Um, all right, well, there, it doesn't look like there are any questions in the chat, so I'm going to go ahead and give you 10 whole minutes back to your day. Isn't that, like, it's a reason to celebrate, I tell you. Um, if you feel like you want to see this again, we will, I, I'm going to send out a recording uh, to you and also for anyone who may have missed this uh, webinar. So be on the lookout for the recording. We will be hosting another live session on June 12th. If you feel like you just need some personal one-on-one -on -one time through this webinar, um, we're doing it again. So uh, thank you so much. We're so very excited to dive into this back to school season. 
go 30,000. We can do it, right? We can do it. I know we can. <laughs> Have a great back to school season. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you. Thank you so much for partnering with us to provide student support this back to school season. Have a great one. Bye.